As a current student going through high school right now, it's crystal clear that there is a significant problem with the US school system. I'm sure many of you people watching or fellow students can relate. I mean, just do a quick, simple Google search. As soon as you type in, why does school make me? Google autofills the results, associating school with negative things. I mean, this is definitely not good considering that you spend 17,280 hours going to school in your life. Today, I'm going to be going over, in my opinion, the problems and flaws with the modern school system. One of the biggest problems with the school system is the lack of funding, and that's partially on the government to blame. According to USAspending.gov, in 2023, the Department of Education was given a $194 billion budget, which was 1.6% of the US federal budget. And to put that into comparison, the US spent over $2 trillion on the military, which was 10 times more what they spent on education. But all right, I get it. The government can't just give the education department more money. They can't just make money appear out of nowhere. Our financial systems are decades old. According to some estimates, we cannot track $2.3 trillion in transactions. But then, the next day, something happened and everybody forgot. The thing is that public schools only get a small portion of their budget from the federal government. Most of their money comes from state and local government resources. Which brings me to my second problem. Inequality. Inequality is a pretty big issue when it comes to education, especially when the mission statement of the US Department of Education is ensuring equal access. Since public school funding relies mostly on local funds, districts in high poverty areas, which statistically serve larger shares of students of color, get less funding per student than districts in low poverty areas, which predominantly serve white students. This highlights the school system's inequality in funding. And if you're saying, oh, but race has nothing to do with poverty, it does. Look at the study done by the United States Census Bureau. Take a look at the graph. That's right, 18.8% of African Americans were in poverty in 2019, compared to the 7.3 poverty rate of white people. Race definitely had some sort of relationship with poverty. And a huge reason for that is because of how school systems are funded. Schools that heavily depend on local funding won't be able to get sufficient funds to effectively educate students if they're in an impoverished area, which means that the people living in that area don't get educated which leads to more poverty. So it's basically an endless cycle. Poor communities will continue to have bad education over and over and over again, leading them right back into poverty. Insufficient funding isn't only affecting the physical infrastructure of the schools. It's actually heavily affecting a student's education as well. Less funding leads to less money overall, which leads to less money to pay to teachers. And that leads to less people wanting to be teachers. And that leads to many unqualified teachers with inadequate training. Now, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of great teachers out there. I mean, it's an important job and they hold the responsibility of passing down education from generation to generation. But nowadays, it seems like teachers are not as respected as they used to be. There's no honor of being a teacher anymore. I feel like the majority of teachers teach without passion. If the teacher has no passion to teach, how do you expect the students to be passionate to learn? I have evidence to back me up as well. <clears throat> Cut that part out. According to a Gallup survey, nearly 7 out of 10 teachers self-reportedly said that they're not emotionally connected to or are dissatisfied with their workplaces. That's pretty concerning. The future of the United States lies in the hands of the youth, and only 3 out of 10 people who teach the youth are actually engaged and passionate about their job. I think teaching should be a much more prestigious job with higher pay, and much higher qualifications. Not only just academic qualifications, but a passion to teach and the ability to motivate students to find their own passion. But the problem with the school system doesn't just lie with the funding and teachers. It goes into what's actually being taught. If you've been in school after 2010, you've probably had some level of exposure to the Common Core Standards. And for all of you boomers out there, the Common Core Standards are a set of academic standards for what every student is expected to learn in each grade level ranging from kindergarten through high school. Now that sounds pretty good, right? From what it sounds like, it seems like the Common Core Standard is promoting equal education. Wrong. Common Core Standards are completely terrible. Common Core Standards homogenizes learning. 
by adopting a uniform set of standards, states are essentially establishing a one-size-fits-all approach to learning. Students learn in different ways, and that education just needs to fit the needs of the student, not in the reverse. Also, the common core standards are just terrible in general. Not only the terrible content, but the teachers are being held accountable for the test results of their students. In many cases, teachers are being evaluated partially on the basis of their students' performance on the standardized tests, which focus on common core skills. With their salaries and jobs on the line, many teachers play it safe by drilling the students during instruction time on items that are most likely going to be found on the final test. This test preparation takes vital time away from real learning and teaching, and instead it's just cramming knowledge into your brain for the test that you'll forget about in a couple of weeks. Now, I'm fine with standardized tests, but they shouldn't hold such a big weight in a student's academics. Standardized tests do not accurately measure a student's true intelligence and it just shows how much one is prepared for it. There are plenty of smart people who don't do well on standardized tests and that leads me to my next point grades. The school system is just focused on marks and grades and thus demotivates children who think outside of the box. And it also gives students a ton of pressure because they're taught to believe that grades are the most important thing. Most of them aren't even able to develop their creative skills or a passion for anything because of the huge roadblock that are grades. In my opinion, grades are not that accurate either. Some teachers grade differently than others and the grading system does not accurately reflect what a student is learning. Like, I swear English teachers be grading on how much they like you in class. Unfortunately, grades play a major role in college acceptances and society as a whole. The high state competitiveness to earn a perfect GPA is quite unhealthy and in my opinion, very toxic. It doesn't help students discover their passions and pursue their dreams. All it does is make students suffer by cramming boring and tedious textbooks to try and get good marks in the class. You can be successful if you're extremely passionate about something and you give it your all. But school isn't all about passion. It never was. Prior to the late 1800s, education was a private practice that took place in private institutions or through homeschooling. But that all changed in 1902 when John D. Rockefeller created the General Education Board with Frederick P. Gates. The General Education Board was responsible for funding the American public school system. And that meant Rockefeller and Gates had tons of influence over what was being taught in schools. From an early age, we are forced into a mandatory school system that requires and encourages youth to attend for a large portion of their human life. Each child is required to learn the accepted version of reality in order to fit in to the specific mold desired by the elite. Just like television, a large part of school is simply programming. The concept of grades and marks do not signify any level of intelligence. In school, we are shown the idea of an authority figure, how the world works, and what intelligence supposedly is. Essentially, the whole point of school is to shape the reality of a student. We are taken from a very early age and put into the institution. From there, we are shown how the world works and what we need to do to survive. It. In 1913, Frederick Gates, one of the founders of the General Education Board, wrote down, In our dream, we have limitless resources, and the people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hand. The intentions behind Rockefeller and Frederick Gates funding the schools was so that they can mold people to be obedient workers and shift society in a way that it would favor big corporations like Standard Oil. School started as a way to create obedient employees for big corporations, but over 150 years has passed and the school system has not seen any major reforms. As a student currently going through the school system, these are just a few problems I've noticed with it. So, even if you are struggling in school, just realize that you're facing a lot of challenges and I understand how tough it can be at some point. So it is up to you on how you want to handle it. Anyways, that's it for now. Thank you to everybody who's watched this far, and I'll see you in the next one.